With the goal of landing humans on Mars by the end of this decade, SpaceX continues to do tests and make improvements on its highly anticipated deep space transport called the Starship. Tasked with being the first vehicle to take humans to another planet, the Starship will carry a crew of 100 explorers to the Red Planet to build the first Martian city. SpaceX has recently completed a 7-engine static fire test on a new prototype for the vehicle. Let's take a closer look. Elon Musk, the billionaire founder of SpaceX, plans to build a full-size city on the surface of Mars. This would be a city open to regular people, not just scientists and researchers. People interested in moving to Mars could pay for their flight with a loan. Once there, people would be able to pay off the loan by working in anything from iron foundries to pizzerias. Musk declared at a 2016 conference that there would be labor shortages for a long time. It's an idea that arguably bears resemblance to 19th century American company towns, where employees lived in a city owned by their employer. Especially in the early days, Mars may not have many choices for local employment, and you'll need to pay off that loan for your flight. This city would be free to govern itself on its own terms, as indicated by the Starlink Internet Service Terms and Conditions released in October 2020. This appears to stand in contradiction to the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which states that the launch origin country is responsible for subsequent space activities. David Anderman, who served as SpaceX's general counsel when the terms were released, suggests that the two documents may be set on a collision course. Musk estimated in 2019 that it would take around 1 million tons of cargo to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. Assuming it cost $100,000 per ton to send cargo to Mars with the upcoming Starship, that would put a Mars city's price at around $100 billion. At the high end, Musk estimates that it could cost around $10 trillion. SpaceX may not stop with just one city, however. Paul Worcester, the principal Mars development engineer for SpaceX, said at the 21st annual International Mars Society Convention in August 2022 that SpaceX could build multiple cities. The idea would be to expand out and start not just with an outpost, but grow into a larger base, not just like there are in Antarctica, but a village, then a town, which grows into a city, and then multiple cities on Mars. Musk claimed in 2019 that a return ticket could cost around $500,000 initially, dropping to $100,000 over time. Musk's goal in 2016 was to reach a ticket price of around the median price of a house in the United States. That would suggest people could sell their houses to move to Mars. In 2017, Musk outlined an aspirational plan to send two cargo ships to Mars as early as 2022. It would then send four ships at the next closest approach, two crewed ships and two cargo ships in 2024. However, in March 2022, Musk suggested that a more likely date for humanity to witness the first humans on Mars would perhaps be 2029. It's also possible, however, that Musk was referencing the moon landing that took place in 1969, making it around 60 years between the two feats. Mars and Earth are at their closest around once every 26 months. The distance between the two at this time reduces to around 33.9 million miles. As SpaceX has yet to even host its first orbital flight with the Starship, it seems unlikely that it will send the first cargo ships this year. If SpaceX adjusts its plans to a more realistic late 2020s deadline, it's perhaps more possible that Musk could indeed meet his goal. Starship and Super Heavy are the biggest, most important pieces of Elon Musk's grand plan for SpaceX. Musk has repeatedly stressed that he founded SpaceX back in 2002 primarily to help humanity colonize Mars. It's vital that we become a multi-planet species, the billionaire entrepreneur has said, citing both a much reduced probability of extinction and the thrill that meaningful space exploration will deliver to billions of people around the world. SpaceX is now actively trying to turn this sci-fi dream into reality. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlement within reach at long last. When Musk revealed his idea to the world, he laid out a basic plan. A large spacecraft and a huge rocket, both of which will be completely and rapidly reusable. The rocket will launch the spacecraft into Earth's orbit, then come back down to Earth for a vertical propulsive landing. The spaceship, meanwhile, will make its way from Earth's orbit to Mars. The craft will touch down on such alien worlds and take off from them as well, without the need for any additional landing craft or ascent vehicles. Off-Earth refueling of the ship is therefore key to Musk's vision. 
For example, spacecraft coming home from Mars or the Moon will need to be topped up on one of these worlds using locally produced propellant. In 2016, Musk called this architecture the Interplanetary Transport System. The name was new, as the billionaire had previously referred to his envisioned concept as the Mars Colonial Transporter. Back then, Musk stated that the ITS will stand 400 feet tall when stacked. The rocket will contribute most of that height, measuring 254 feet tall to the ship's 162 feet. There will be some overlap between the two vehicles during stacking, which explains why the total height isn't 416 feet. Both vehicles will be powered by SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engine, which is more powerful than the Merlin that propels the company's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. The ITS ship will sport nine Raptors, and the 40-foot-wide booster will boast a whopping 42, allowing the rocket to produce 13,033 tons of thrust at liftoff, 3.6 times more than NASA's Saturn V moon rocket was able to generate. And there won't be just one ITS ship and booster. The ultimate plan involves sending 1,000 or more people packed spaceships to Mars every 26 months, helping to establish a million-person city on the Red Planet within 50 to 100 years. Musk did not lay out plans for building this city. That will happen organically as more and more people arrive on Mars, he said, comparing the ITS to the Transcontinental Railroad that helped open the American West to settlement from the East and Midwest in the 19th century. And these pioneers won't just be the super rich if all goes according to plan. The ITS's reusability could eventually bring the price of a Mars trip down enough to make it affordable for large numbers of people. This overall vision has held firm over the past three years, but Musk has repeatedly tweaked the design and the system's name. In 2017, for example, he announced that ITS was now the BFR, which stood for Big Falcon Rocket. The BFR was shorter, slimmer, and less powerful than its design predecessor, measuring 348 feet tall by 30 feet wide when stacked and featuring only 31 Raptor engines on the booster and six on the spaceship. But the biggest change concerned the use of the spaceship rocket duo. Musk announced that SpaceX eventually planned to employ the BFR for all of its spaceflight needs, from launching satellites to ferrying people to and from Mars to cleaning up space junk in Earth orbit. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy therefore will be phased out over the long haul, as will both the crew and cargo variants of SpaceX's Dragon capsule. Musk stated that expanding the BFR's role in this manner will make the system much more affordable for SpaceX to develop and manufacture. The BFR design then experienced a growth spurt that nearly took the system back to its original height. In September 2018, Musk told us that the rocket spaceship duo will now stand 387 feet tall when stacked. The BFR ship will also sport seven Raptors instead of six, and the vehicle will now sport four movable fins, two near its nose and two bigger ones near the tail. These fins will help the ship maneuver its way to safe landings on worlds with significant atmospheres, such as Mars and Earth. The two rear fins will also serve as landing pads, as will a leg that's stylized to look like a fin. Two months later, the BFR was no more. Musk told us that the system will now be called Starship. That will also be the spaceship's name, whereas the huge rocket will be called Super Heavy. At that point, SpaceX still planned to build the Starship vehicle out of carbon fiber. But in January 2019, Musk announced that he was switching to stainless steel. Steel's a bit heavier than carbon fiber, but has great thermal properties and is far, far cheaper. He has since called the material switch the best design decision yet made on the ITS slash BFR slash Starship project. In May 2019, Musk said the current plan calls for six Raptors on the Starship vehicle rather than seven. And a few months later, he tweeted that Super Heavy will now sport 35 Raptors instead of 31. That brings us to the latest design update, which Musk presented on September 28, 2019, from SpaceX's South Texas facility near the tiny village of Boca Chica. The billionaire didn't announce any huge changes, though there was some more engine news. Super Heavy will now have space for 37 Raptors, though not all of those slots will be filled on every flight. Each mission will probably require at least 24 Raptors on the booster. Musk had previously estimated the total development cost of the Starship project to be between $2 billion and $10 billion. He later stated that the price tag for SpaceX would be toward the lower end of that range. As research and development continue on the Starship, the latest news from SpaceX is that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone a static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy prototype, Booster 7, on September 19th, 
marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA for the first orbital test flight of Starship. The company cleared a major hurdle in June with the completion of an environmental review that allows the launch to go forward but requires dozens of modifications to the mission plan. Once SpaceX has the green light from regulators, Starship will be able to launch from Starbase and take a brief trip to orbit before performing a splashdown landing in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii. Super Heavy will separate from Starship shortly after launch and attempt to land on a modified drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico. In addition to its inevitable role in getting humans to Mars, all of this is leading up to Starship's eventual participation in NASA's Artemis program to return astronauts to the surface of the moon as soon as 2025. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about the Voyager mission and how it has recently sent back a terrifying new signal to Earth. Do you think a human colony on Mars is a good idea? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.